Welcome back to another episode of eBusiness Insider. Today we're talking about Invention, which is part of the T2 production chain that we're talking about in this series. It is a method of turning T1 blueprint copies into T2 blueprint copies. Each job is going to be chance-based, so there's a possibility to fail multiple jobs in a row. And optional materials have the uh, possibility to increase the likelihood of success and augment the final uh, blueprint, as we'll get into in just a minute. Now, in the early days of EVE, invention was actually very difficult to do. However, a recent balance pass, I think within the last year or so, has resulted in invention becoming much easier to do, and as a result, you're going to experience some competition at the marketplace if you do want to use this as a profit source. Now, stay tuned until later in the video. We're going to talk about how to maximize that, if that's your angle, but I would suggest going for... Uh, T2 production as your end goal uh, for your invention. Now we've already talked about how basic materials are going to get turned through reactor farming into intermediates which will be used for T2. We'll cover the rest of that in later videos but today we're going to be adding on to that with a chain that turns T1 blueprint originals or copies into their T2 forms. Now I'm not a huge fan of RNG in this particular video game, but in the case of Invention, I don't think it's particularly bad. It is going to work out in our favor in this particular video, and it might just uh, just as well work out for you. Now the requirements for Invention uh, are basically, first and foremost, a method of obtaining T1 BPCs in bulk. And a great way to do this is from using the uh, research investment that we talked about in previous videos, but we're also going to need some data cores and decryptors, i.e. tools for these jobs, and of course a sustainable and suitable facility that supports this job type. Now as far as skills, there are a few different uh, skills that are required and they're racial. So that means if you're looking to do invention on a Caldari blueprint, you're going to need the Caldari encryption methods and Caldari starship engineering skills. In addition to that, you're also going to need some basic science and core skills such as the ones that you see here listed uh, on the Caracal blueprint. So of course for whatever type of blueprint that you're looking at doing your invention on, I would highly suggest that you go ahead and investigate under the uh, invention tab, you can see here on the blueprint, uh, the listed skill requirements. As for the optional materials that we talked about, uh, decryptors are something unique to invention in the in the way that you don't actually have to buy and use these for your invention jobs if you don't want to. And in fact, there are plenty of jobs and job types where it doesn't make sense to use a decryptor because it is an additional cost. And while it will augment the blueprint, as you see here in this table, um, you have a wide array of options for which one to use, but these are not always relevant for the type of invention that you're doing. Perhaps you're doing a module or something that you simply want to turn out bulk jobs and you don't want to have to pay for the additional cost of a decryptor and that's completely up to you. For the purposes of this video and for the purposes of the blueprint that we're working on, we're going to be investigating the Accelerant Decryptor. I feel like this offers uh, the best uh, performance and price and sort of flexibility all wrapped into one bundle and it definitely does give us a guarantee of an increased blueprint whereas some of these are a bit of a gamble. And I don't want you to get too much into gambling on your invention jobs because it's already a chance-based system. Now with that being said, T2 as wide of a market as it is, there are going to be plenty of applications that it's absolutely worth your time to not only buy a decryptor for your jobs, but also to go ahead and buy one of the expensive decryptors, such as the Optimized Attainment or Optimized Augmentation. Uh, decryptors. And so, for example, we'll look a little bit later in the video at the uh, at the performance metrics of building perhaps a T2 battleship hull or something like that. But those are the type of hulls that I would want to use optimized on. And for the rest of the jobs, if any decryptors at all, I would stick to the cheap ones. Now I've gone ahead and prepared a set of T1 Blueprint Originals as part of my Blueprint Research video. I've basically just grabbed those, so check that video out. There'll be a link at the end roll if you're interested. Now I've gone ahead and copied from those Blueprint Originals a set of uh, single run copies for us to use for our invention jobs. And as well, I've picked up a set of data cores as indicated in the requirements for the Blueprint. Um, and of course, additional to that, I've picked up the, uh, the decryptors that we'll be using. So let's take a look at the invention process. For starters, I'm going to use Blueprint on one of these caracals, and we're going to take a minute to go through uh, all the different options on this industry window here. The first one is the likelihood of your success, which is, uh, as you see here, mostly determined by the skills that you're using, but as well, as we'll get into in a minute, the decryptor is going to augment that. Now you're also going to see here the Blueprint material efficiency and time efficiency at output, and uh, as we plug in decryptors, you'll see that change as well. Now for the duration of the job, this is mostly affected again by the skill, but also heavily affected by the citadel that you're located in or whatever facility you're in. Onward now to the input materials on the left side of the screen here, and the first ones of course as talked about are those data cores, and then in the lower section we have a uh, an option for these decryptors. Now if you wanted to simulate some of the other decryptors that are an option for you, you absolutely can do that here and you'll see the reflected change in the right side of the window. However, since I've already isolated and picked out that I'll be using the accelerant decryptor, I'm going to go ahead and select this one and then I'm going to begin setting jobs. 
Now there is a better way to go about this actually. If you use the blueprint tab uh, on your industry window, you're going to see a set of filters that you can use to filter for your own station, for example, or your own uh, facility that you're in. Uh, and then from there, you can just simply roll through click by click and, and set each of those blueprints. I'm using right click use blueprint for each one of these commands, which is obviously fine as well. But, you know, there is a faster way to do it. So I figured I would share that with you guys. So basically, we're just going to set up these 10 jobs and then I'll get back with you in a day or so when they're done and poof, magically, they're all ready to be outputted. So what I'm going to go and uh, do here is just basically run through the list one by one. And you're going to see as I deliver each of these jobs, I'm going to get a notification for either success or failure. Either the job will output and I'll get a blueprint, or the job will fail and I won't get a blueprint back. In this particular example, I end up getting very lucky, as I did mention. I think I get about 7 out of 10 blueprints back, rather than the expected 4. Um, but that's just the way it rolls. I mean, sometimes invention is kind to you, sometimes it's not so kind, but I would say just basically allow those averages to play out, and as long as you're setting enough jobs, you will eventually see the outputs matching the expected results in averages. That is how they work out. So the last thing that there is to do is basically set up some new copy jobs. Now something interesting about invention is if you do have a multiple run copy, as you'll see here in a second, I'm going to set up a 10 run copy for this Caracal BPO. Uh, the invention job will take one slice off of that copy and then it's going to go ahead and output the other nine or however many remaining runs you have on your blueprint. So rather than cluttering up your hangar with a hundred, you know, sets of the same blueprint, I'm just going to make one blueprint, or in this case I'll run a set of 10, uh, of 10 run copies. And so that's going to allow me to run at the end of these uh, copy jobs, 10 invention jobs per blueprint. And so that's basically a golden ratio. You want to be running about uh, nine times or 10 times as much invention jobs as you do copy jobs. So if you have one character, then you want to go ahead and run one job per 10. Or if you have multiple characters, then of course, go ahead and, uh, and do it that way. So as with other videos, of course, the Raitaru or another engineering complex, huge bonuses to what we're doing today. Now, if you did want to use uh, this type of tutorial for a investment instead, then what you're going to have to do is do a bit of market research, or in this case, contract research, into what uh, what the availability of these T2 BPCs are. So I've experienced in the past that the invention is not too bad. You can actually crank out quite a few blueprint copies, especially if you have multiple characters. The problem very quickly turns into volume of sale on the market. So as you see here, I'm going to just basically query the contract system to see how many copies of a few various uh, blueprint types are available. So I'm going to run through a list here of Cerberus, uh, I think I do Curse, hug in, and then I'm going to try a couple, um, I try a T2BC, and then we're also going to look at some T2 battleships. Now some of these have widely different costs to produce, and so keep that in mind when you're looking at these prices, but of course, the more expensive ones um, in terms of the blueprint originals are going to be more expensive T2 blueprint copies. With that being said, not all of these are going to be profitable to produce, so it's important that you check through each of these contracts and take a look at what your competition is selling at in terms of the number of runs, in terms of the ME and PE, and then you're going to calculate from there, based on the number of runs, what these blueprints are actually worth. Now even with all that in mind, this is still not a guarantee that your blueprints are going to sell, as something with a lot of volume on market could simply mean that it's sitting there idle. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the performance metric of the ships themselves. And so I'm going to search up the hull first here for Cerberus, and then what we're going to do is go to the price history tab, and we're going to take a look at, uh, in the bottom lower right section here, the quantity or the volume of sale on this particular market. And so for Serbs, you can see it's only about midway through the day here. They've already sold 50. The expected returns are between, you know, 75 to 100. So we're going to use that as a metric. We're going to compare the same types of hulls, and this is going to give us a uh, some kind of indication of what the most pop popular hull types are. And so as you see here, Curse is much less popular than the Cerberus and uh, in turn Hagen will be less popular than Curse. And uh, same thing applies basically with the command ships and with the T2 battleships. We want to have a look at each one of these hulls before we get into it so that we can be, uh, if not guaranteed, a little bit more sure of ourselves in terms of getting a sale at the marketplace. Of course, again, this only applies if you are trying to make a profit from the blueprints themselves, which I actually wouldn't advise. I would prefer that you used it as part of a T2 production chain. So let's go ahead and take a look at the summary. Of course, we do have that T2 production chain synergy as well as a synergy for industrial uh, complexes or citadels. Now, we do want to use the best decryptor for our job to maximize the output. And of course, if we're doing this as an investment, we want to avoid low volume items. 
Now, taking advantage of the synergy with blueprint research means that our otherwise wasted resources in those idle blueprints are going to be well used with this type of investment, so definitely check out that video. That is going to be it for this uh, episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you try out Invention on your own. It is a great tool to add to your toolkit. As always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you're looking for a trial for EVE Online, check out the link in the description. That's going to be it for now, guys. Peace out.